Hey guys, Jeff here from Pat Pro Movies and welcome to Akshanika, day number six. Thanks for sticking around. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about EQ and compression in your sound design mixes. And I know EQ is one of the most valuable tools you can actually use as a sound designer. Um, you can really make some sounds pop out of the mix and also you can make other sounds really blend in and seem more natural. So uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, today we're also going to cover compression. Uh, compression is a tool you can use to balance out the dynamics of something, whether it be a vocal, a music track, a sound effect, that kind of thing. Uh, also you can use compression on your uh, stereo master bus to balance out the overall levels of your entire mix. So um, I'm going to take you into my computer and we'll show you how it's done. Alright guys, welcome to the Drunk Gamer Sound Design session inside of Pro Tools here. I'm going to take you down to my gunshot sounds. They're labeled in green here so you can see them easily. I'm going to start off with Rob's gun here. And uh, let's just take a listen and see if it needs anything. Okay, yeah, maybe that sounds pretty good. Um, since he's full frame right here, I maybe want this gunshot sound to be more in your face. So um, we can do that with EQ. Let's pull up um, in the inserts box an EQ. I usually start with the 7 band EQ inside of Pro Tools. Um, this may look daunting at first, but it's really pretty simple. This EQ graph is measured in frequency versus volume. So starting with the lowest frequency of human hearing, that's 20 hertz, all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And um, on the side here, we've got the volume graph. So let's play the sound and see what it needs. OK, um, maybe it needs a little low end thump to it. So I'm going to bring up the low end here at 100 hertz, about 6 decibels. Yeah, that's definitely helping. It's sitting pretty good, however, since he's full frame, I may want an in-your-face kind of feel. So let me play the sound and bring the curve up at about 5 kilohertz. Yeah, that's definitely helping. And I'll add a little air to the top here. There we go, starting to get a decent gun sound there. Pretty good there. However, when the shot changes to him um, from a distance, I want to help sell the distance better, so we can actually do that with EQ. Let me pull up another EQ and show you what we can do here. When sounds are heard from a distance, they're going to lack high end frequencies. As a general rule, if it's distant, just pull down some high end frequencies like this. And then maybe drop the low end a little bit. So let's play this. Yes, sounds like he's very distant back there now. Um, the only problem we have now is that when he's full frame, we still have that distant EQ curve applied. So I'm going to show you how to automate this to turn on and off automatically within your mix. Come over to your inserts window and right click on the plugin that you use to give the distance and pull up the automation dialog. And we're going to add the master bypass to this automation dialog. Now come over here to your track view options and go down to the 7 band EQ and master bypass. And here we've got the curve for the master bypass switch for this EQ plugin. So basically, anytime Rob is distant, I want this plugin to be on. And anytime he's up close, I want this plugin to be off. So I'm going to scrub around here, and anytime Rob is either not on camera or distant, I'm going to turn this plugin on. And anytime he's up close, the plugin is going to be off. So at here, the shot changes to him being distant all the way until here. So I'm just going to turn this plugin on by grabbing it and pulling it up. So basically now you've got a simple automation for this plugin to turn on and off automatically. There we go, pretty simple. Now you've got a great distance fill to those gunshots. And you can do that with all of your gunshots. I think I did, as you'll see below, automating these as they come in and out of frame. Okay, next I'm going to take you down to some of my dialogue tracks I recorded and show you how we can use EQ to make some of those sit better in the mix. Let's go to Philip's ADR session here. We actually use lapel microphones to record these dialogue sessions in the studio. These lapel mics give the actor more motion and uh, better movement in the studio to really act out what they're doing while they're recording their dialogue. However, they tend to be very mid-rangey. So let me play you some of uh, Philip's um, unedited dialogue. Suppressive fire on the reload. 
Wait for my Okay, not bad. It's a little bass heavy, so I'm gonna drop the low end here. There's just information down here that we don't even want. So anything about below 80 hertz, you can pretty much get rid of on dialogue. Suppressive fire on the Okay, uh, like I said, those lapel mics are very mid-rangey. The mid-range starts at about 500 and maybe goes up to about 2K. But I'm gonna drop right in the center here at about 1K, just like this. Pretty heavy, those are very mid-rangey. Suppressive fire. On the reload. Still a little boomy to me, so I'm going to bring it down at about 200 hertz. Suppressive fire on the reload. Getting there, and maybe add just a little high-end uh, presence to him. Suppressive fire on the reload. Wait for my go. Anyone else? Not bad. Suppressive fire on the reload. Wait for my go. Sitting pretty good there. And like I was talking about with the gunshots, you can actually use an EQ curve to sell the distance of someone's dialogue too, by automating the plugin. Lastly, I'm going to take you down to my stereo master bus here and show you a little bit how we can apply an EQ and some compression to the overall mix and get it sounding great. So for starters, there's usually a lot of low end rumble and junk in these final mixes that I just want to get rid of because they're not going to translate through on speakers. They're just going to muddy up the mix. So I'm going to bring up a one band EQ and go over to a high pass type and um, that basically just filters out all low end frequencies and I'm going to bring that down to about 45 hertz and uh, make it a pretty steep drop off here. But um, that's basically going to filter out all the low end junk under 46 hertz. So um, pretty easy and um, it's stuff you're not really hearing, it's just kind of muddying up the mix. Um, another thing I'm going to do is... Um, bring up a limiter on this mix and basically a limiter is going to limit the overall mix from peaking past a certain point and you can set that point to anything I usually like to set it to 0 dB the loudest point you can get in Pro Tools so I'm going to bring up an L1 Ultra Maximizer this is from Waves um, there, you can use any sort of limiter but um, this is one I prefer okay so I'm going to set the out ceiling at 0 like I said and um, I'm just going to play this track and listen to right. it and see what I need to do. Suppressive fire on the reload. Okay, I'm going to bring Wait the threshold down. Go. You'll notice it's Anyone raising else? the volume as I bring I'll the take threshold care of. down. And this attenuation mark is actually how much gain reduction is happening. So as the volume gets louder, the limiter is actually reducing the peaks automatically, keeping it from going over 0 dB. So that's a great way to get more volume out of your pieces without getting any overs or clips or peaks and that kind of thing. Um, a lot of people want to know how they can get more volume out of their mixes. And um, basically you just bring up a limiter on your master bus and um, bring the threshold down. It'll compress the volume and raise it so you don't have any digital overs. So that's it for today's EQ and compression tutorial. I want to thank you guys for sticking around. We'll see you again next time. I'm going to be talking about the film scoring aspect for our movies. Thanks a lot.